Next on BYUSN, basketball breaking news all over the place, including Jackson Robinson officially declaring for the NBA draft, a new assistant coach for the Cougars, and another BYU player enters the portal. Hans Olsen will join us to discuss which BYU football players will be drafted in this week's NFL draft and what positions BYU needs to target in the transfer portal still. Growers Leah Cotilla and Elisa Keller of Track and Field are in the house to preview the Robinson invitation this weekend. And baseball takes care of that team up north in walk-off fashion. Aloy, slow dribbler, kicked and shortstop, BYU wins! Is there any other way to beat your arch nemesis than in dramatic walk-off fashion? There is, 20 to no. Okay, that one. <laughs> it was 20 to 3, wasn't it? But which is better? We'll but still, it, yeah. yeah, a 20 to 3 win about a decade ago <laughs> was pretty fantastic as well. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Wednesday, April 24th. I am Spencer Linton. He is a man busy stocking up on discount ice cream from the Creamery, Jerem Jordan. So I walk over to the Creamery outlet, which is near our building, and uh, I notice this. Uh, three gallons of Pope's post-game snack, just $19.99. I was like, oh, are they trying to get rid of it? So uh, Roger Sherman, who was on the uh, football pregame show in the fall, uh, which was great. He then posted this meme, incredible deal on ice cream in Provo, Utah, SMU fires Rob Lanier. That was the <laughs> domino effect, <laughs> right? SMU all the way up to ice cream at BYU, which was pretty funny uh, yesterday. <laughs> I did not partake. I have tried it, though. It was good ice cream. <laughs> we need some submissions for Kevin Young's new ice cream flavor. Well, well, I would say leader in the clubhouse will be like Forever Young will be the name. Sure. And then they'll be, I don't know what flavor it is. Fun what fact. Is, what is Kal- like, what's Kalani's? Kal- uh, Kalani Satake Road? Ro- yeah, yeah, yeah. Satake, Satake Road. Road yeah. yeah, maybe it's Kevin's but, Crunch or something. Yeah, yeah, I like that. We have our own ice cream flavor. Did people know that? Did you know that, everybody at home? Uh, it is blue goggles. It's, it's blue colored and it's deli- it's like a mint. It's yeah, delicious. It's loaded with sugar and all sorts of things. Which that, is that... what this program brings <laughs> you as well. <laughs> all rise and shout. Let's get to what's trending. Three back door, Jackson Robinson. And Jackson hammers it home. And the idea of having massive roster turnover for BYU will be a process. It's going to take years. And he wants to get the guys that truly want to be there What's Trending, presented by Tim Daly Nissan, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Let's go ahead and sweeten the topic, shall we, with ice cream on the mind. News continues to roll in for BYU men's basketball. Crazy day Some of it eye-opening, some of it very exciting, some, well, not so exciting because it could potentially set BYU back. We'll let you decide after all of this. Beginning with BYU forward Jackson Robinson, making it official on his social media accounts that he is declaring for the NBA draft. He didn't say it, Spence. He declared it. He declared it. And just to be clear, this doesn't mean that he cannot reverse course. We'll get into that in just a moment. This is just letting you know that, okay, I'm going to try and go full in on this, and then we'll see what happens. He had until Saturday night to do that. So there you go. All right. Jerem, what's your reaction first and foremost to Jackson Robinson's declaration that he is pursuing full force the NBA draft. I declare for the NBA draft. I think that's what he said. This is what we expected. Excited for him. He's developed into a guy who has this opportunity. Alex Barcelo 2.0. Let, hear me out. Barely played two years at another place. Places. Comes to BYU. Becomes a name that people know nationally. Congratulations to Mark Pope and his staff who did that. Jackson Robinson worked hard. Sixth man of the year in the Big 12, baby! So, uh, he... He uh, has uh, a few options here. One is he just straight up goes pro. Let's assess that for a second. He is a second-round pick or not a pick in all mock drafts. He is not a first in a single uh, mock draft. Normally, that guy, Spence, goes back to college, betters his stock, and then he tries to get into the first round. But it depends what Jackson Robinson wants. If he wants to just kind of be like, hey, if I get drafted or not and I don't make a team and I'll be in the G League and I'll try and go up, I'm okay with that. I'm done with college. I just want to do that. He has that option. Another option is this. He has to uh, return to college. It was May 29th, but the rules that just got changed are he has to get back in the portal before May 1st. 
But because Mark Pope left, he has 30 days from April 12th, which is May 12th. So he has until May 12th to hop back in the portal. That's if he wants to transfer. If he just wants to straight up come back to BYU, he can just come back to BYU by May 29th, is my understanding. Now, maybe that's May 1st with the new ruling. If that's the case, that's one week from now. My guess is that Jackson Robinson stays in the draft and sees what happens for him. So I'm excited for him. It's very different because we kind of expected this, and he immediately told us and had the Thank You BYU post. Have we learned in the last two weeks that a Thank You BYU post is necessary to win over the Cougar Nation? Because the way Mark Pope handled it didn't help. Like, Cougar Nation didn't really like it, right? It but, is in major college sports in general. Yeah. It's not just a BYU thing. It took a week, and people were like, well, let's take it a week. Cody Figure, Jackson Robinson, right? They have, they have done it in a way that has uh, endured them to BYU. Endeared them, yeah. Endeared sure. them, yes. So I, I expect Jackson to stay in the draft. I don't expect him to come back or transfer, but who knows. Best of luck to him. I'm excited for him. I'm excited for him, too, and here's what I love about this scenario. As much as it hurts to lose just a next-level talent like Jackson yeah. and the Big 12 sixth man of the year, that's a lofty title He's a good player. in the best basketball conference in America. I know some of you are saying, well, not in the NCAA tournament. Uh, he was awesome in the NCAA tournament. Body of work, points. people, over the course of the season. Yeah. Jackson was awesome in the tournament, and frankly, that vaulted his status back up a few notches. Like, all of a sudden, he was trending in NBA draft projections. And, again, it was like, oh, maybe he's a second, uh, a mid-second round pick. He's got all the intangibles. He's an elite shooter. The thing I love most about this is that he would be leaving BYU, and BYU would have produced a draft pick for the first time since Jimmer Fredette. It has been 13 years since BYU had an NBA draft pick. I want it to be Jackson Robinson. That'd be great. Just for the optics that you can go to BYU and you can be an NBA player. And Kevin Young only yep. helps that conversation. I know Jackson didn't play for him, but Jackson will always count as a BYU guy. Yep. And BYU helped him get to the NBA. The optics need to change there because, frankly, it's pretty dire. Oh, yeah. No, BYU's not been good in that space. That's what excites me the most about this is that Jackson has an opportunity to be BYU's first draft pick in 13 years, and I feel like that helps perception. Hopefully he'll get into the second round. Hopefully he tests well, he shows well, and a, someone takes him on a second round. I hope That'd he, be great. Yes, I hope he it's does. It's hard, bro. There are 450 NBA players in the world. <laughs> like, it's hard to crack And Kyle that. Collins were told us yesterday since Jeez. the inception of the NBA in its current state, Five, like 5,500 players total. I'd have to do the math on that, Spence. Uh, double check that because I believe it's more. But um, <sighs> that's wild. Even if it was only 10,000 all the time. Like, that's crazy, right? Okay. Atiki Ali Atiki entered the transfer portal yesterday. So that means five dudes are in the portal or going pro with Jackson Robinson. We got Robinson, Dallin Hall, Richie Saunders, Atiki Ali Atiki now, and Marcus Adams Jr. The returners are Trevin Nell, Noel Waterman, Foose. Dawson Baker, Trey Stewart. That's kind of what it is. Isaac Davis is signed. There's another high-profile commit, of course, earlier this week. It looks like about six scholarships available. Okay. What do you make of a Tiki going to the portal and how it affects the roster? So I think a lot of BYU fans are like, well, it's a guy that was deep down the bench and, you know, he didn't have a huge impact on last season. Eh. I probably took more issue with this than most because where's the size on BYU's roster right now? Like, after a tiki, if a tiki is gone, where's the guy that's over 6'6", Jerem? Uh, it's Noah Waterman. That's it? Yeah. Well, you and br he's you bring not in, your prototypical big man. Right. He's a stretch four. You, you bring him in. You bring I understand in that. Yeah. But I, just the to have a rim protector on the roster who has been in the system and has been around, like, I know a tiki is still raw in many ways, but you – I thought, okay, at least BYU's got one rim protector in a tiki. And now he's gone, potentially. Like, who knows if he finds a landing spot? I don't know. Maybe he'll come back to BYU. This, again, just because he went into the portal doesn't right. mean, like, he can't end up back at BYU. But now it just makes it that much more of a problem for Kevin Young and his staff to go and get another big. Like, the only bigs are Foos and... Waterman, but Waterman well, doesn't really count. It's Foose. It's big. And you'll probably get three others, by the way. Typically, you want to carry four scholarship front court players. 
Okay, say so what it's you will about, and yeah, three. Say what you will about Atiki, but he did have nice rapport with the guards, and there were alley oop plays and lobs, like. And again, his ability to protect above yeah. the rim and five critical important fouls yeah, he, when they needed it. He had, um, yeah, he had some skill, right? It had been three years. We hadn't qu- kind of seen him take that next step. He was hampered by a thumb injury last year. That yeah. didn't help him. So it is a bummer if uh, BYU does lose to Tiki. But, yeah, you've, you've got to add. Certainly there's going to be a lot of new guys for sure. Right now you have five plus two in your roster. Five returners, it looks like, two out of high school, and then uh, plus five. Who knows where those will come from, but I'm excited and confident they'll be good players. Sure, sure. Yeah, I'm confident as well. It's just another thing for Kevin Young and his staff to potentially deal with. But also when you're the new guy and you got a new thing, you kind of want, like, to bring in certain pieces that are pre-existing, but also, like, some new flavor. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but uh, here we go. All right, last bit of news. Well, I guess we have two more bits of news, but the next bit of news we're going to discuss Head coach Kevin Young officially hires Brandon Dunson as his first assistant coach coming from Stanford now to Provo. What do you make of the hire that we had heard had been in the works for a while now? Like it had yeah. been discussed by multiple Rob- people Robbie on the McCombs show. We on had that. mentioned his name. Yep. Matt Norlander Orlando doubled down on Monday. Now it's official. What do you think? I like it. Um, it's always good to have a guy from the outside, if not multiple, right? who aren't uh, like a former BYU player and not a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So I like to hire a lot. Brandon's excited. He had a great post last night talking about playing for a great fan base and a great great uh, school and whatnot. He's been at Stanford the last two years. He was not kept over with the new head coach, Kyle Smith, who, by the way, was at San Francisco, went to Washington State, and now he's a Stanford guy. He's been at Denver and Fullerton and so on and so forth. Young guy who was influential in getting some really notable recruits, namely Andre Stoyakovich last year. Uh, who was a McDonald's All-American, but only averaged eight points a game. Um, okay, he, he was at Nevada, Caleb Martin, Cody Martin, Jalen Harris, like future NBA guys. He's been around good players as well. So I, I think it's a really good hire, and it's the first of several. BYU has four more spots. It's pretty simple. Every BYU fan should feel really, really good about this hire because it was Kevin Young's first. And we all are big on Kevin Young's opinion as a guy that can develop NBA talent and all of the, like, the positivity around him and what he brings to BYU, if he feels like Brandon Dunson needs to be on his staff and you truly trust like, what Kevin Young is and who he is and buy into the hype, then you should feel good about this. And right now I do. It was the first name that popped up in the assistant coaching search was Brandon Dunson. So I was like, well, who is this guy? And then, yeah, as we just chronicled and you just laid out, He's a guy that's been around. He's been an associate head coach. He's done some things. But frankly, if Kevin Young believes in this dude and he comes as the uh, double minority. uh, I think Ben Criddle was the one that coined that. Okay. AKA AKA not white, not a member of the church. Sure. Yeah, Yeah, that that matters. It matters for BYU. But frankly, in in Kevin Young, we trust. And in Kevin Young, I trust. If he values this guy, like, I'm all in. I'm stoked. Let's go. Can't wait to meet him, man. Okay, last but not least, what's going on yesterday? Uh, BYU will play at Providence in the Big 12 Big East battle next season, according to John Rothstein. Let's take a look at the updated what we know slash been reported non-conference schedule at Wyoming in football and men's basketball. What? At Providence, Queens, Central Arkansas, and then two of these three, Spence, Purdue, Notre Dame, Arkansas. John Calipari. Oh, man. In San Diego. That's a great tournament, by the way, at the Rady Children's Invitation. And the national runner-up, potentially. Yep. So hopefully they'll lose a bunch of pieces. Edie's gone for sure. Six of the 11 non-conference games because the Big 12 will go to 20 conference games. Do you like the schedule so far? Yes, it's plenty tough. Like, you don't need anybody else. Mail it in like, the next yeah, five? absolutely. Let's go. Absolutely. <laughs> like, you've, you've got enough on there because now the Big 12 goes to 16 teams and you're bringing over Utah, Colorado, and Arizona. Little sisters of the poor. And Come Arizona on State, over. yes, but like... <laughs> I know you're saying goodbye to Texas and Oklahoma, but the conference somehow I feel like will get better. Arizona and Colorado are like right? they're better like, teams than Oklahoma and Texas as currently constituted. All, please make it manifest. All those in favor. Yeah, it's crazy. No, it's, I'm, it's enough. And and like at Providence, by the way, BYU won two NCAA tournament games in 1981 in Rhode Island. So the, yeah, let, I, there's some history there, which is. Really I want fun. five quad fours. 
I want five more quad fours. I'm with, on, I'm with, I'm with you. On the schedule. At Wyoming's a t uh, quad two at best. At Providence will be, you hope, quad one, right? Queens yeah. is quad four, probably. Central Arkansas, quad four. Well, and how many non-conference games two will of, there be? Are they going to play 20? 11. Are they going to play 20 conference games? Yeah, we've yes. learned that. So 11 uh, I've confirmed. Games. I've confirmed that the anticipation is that it will be 11. Okay. Yep. So there you go. Used Give to be 13. Me five quad fours, please. Because uh, at Wyoming will be at worst a quad three at Providence, quad one. Can probably. BYU somehow play slick? Dave Rice, what's up? No, they're not. They're not. No, you don't want to back down from anybody. Okay. Hey, tip you high, coming to pro. Like, did did a weak non-conference really hurt BYU that much last year? Maybe a hair. Not. It didn't feel like it hurt that BYU way. very much. Everybody plays quad. Did it hurt the Ken four? Palm ratings? <laughs> Their net ranking? Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> because you're playing the best conference in America. Yeah, baby. All right. Speaking of. Our question All of the right. day. One week into the Kevin Young era, how would you assess the state of BYU basketball right now? Oh, yeah. At Joe Brady 12 on X answers, I would assess it as different. Okay. In my opinion, there are too many unknowns. Oh. I like the direction, but I feel like it's trying a new flavor of ice cream. Do you Apparently want some, this is ice cream show. Some Pope's ice cream? They got plenty at the creamery still. Joe Brady says, it sounds good, speaking of the ice cream, but until you try it, you don't know. Right, we don't know what that roster is going to look like. Hopefully we'll see it soon. Join Hopefully us Saturday. Hopefully there's a guy that's uh, over 6'6", six, six other than Noah Waterman. They'll just be uh, all <laughs> short <guys>. Join <laughs> us Saturday from noon to 1 Eastern time, live from Dallas, Carrollton specifically, at the Josie Ranch Athletic Complex. For a fan fest, baby, live on BYU TV and BYU Radio. After the break, the great Hans Olsen, BYU football radio analyst, prominent Salt Lake City radio personality, discusses which BYU players have the best chance to get drafted. And wait until you hear his opinion on the BYU quarterbacks when we ask him about it. This is BYU SN. BYU Sports Nation is sponsored by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. To the boundary, to the pylon, to the end zone! Basketball timeout for some BYU football. Welcome back to BYU Sports Station. We are live in Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play -play. alongside Jerem Jordan. I'm Spencer Linton. Earlier this morning, our ice cream connoisseur, Jerem, had an opportunity to well, speak with the that. radio analyst of the Cougars, Hans Olsen, to discuss everything from the NFL draft to BYU's quarterbacks. This is Hans Olsen, one-on-one -on -one with Jerem. Hans, where is Kingsley Suamata'ia going? What's your pick on round? And then is there a team that you think he would fit well with? I think Kingsley Suamata'ia is a really interesting subject because – there's going to be a lot of NFL teams that are looking at Penn Asu with the Detroit Lions, and they know the relationship, and they know the body type, and they know the speed, and they might say, we want that, because I do think that Penny Suley, he's one of the top three offensive linemen, not just tackles, offensive linemen in the NFL right now, and they want that. So I think that really helps Kings Lewis so much. To, uh, if they – just eliminate last year's film and take a look at his ability, then he could be end of first, beginning of second. If they take a look at the film from last year and really address it and say, well, wh what exactly is he? Then he's maybe a second or a third round pick. I'm going to go conservative and I'm going to say middle of second round for Kingsley, but I'm excited to see what he does in the NFL. So you're saying uh, last year the film was a little different, uh, struggled maybe a little more than the year before. Is yeah. some of that being in the Big 12 better competition? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, seeing really solid defensive end um, and really tough schemes. You know, Jerem, the Big 12 defenses that they present have so much movement. It, it, it was interesting standing in the booth and watching the 3-3-5 set that – consistently present TCU and Iowa State. It, it is so tough as an offensive lineman to gauge who's coming, when they're coming. And, you know, you've got mic switches, which means that the center has to readjust protections uh, two, maybe three seconds, a split second before the ball is snapped. 
He's trying to readjust because you've got walk-ups and you've got step-backs and you've got the hybrid safeties that can rush, rush off the edge. And it, it, it's not just, it wasn't just about skill set. It was about schemes. Big 12 defensive schemes are, are very intricate, very difficult. Okay, clearly Kingsley will be drafted. And let's talk about what that means for BYU. Not just for Kingsley, but that position. This is going to be three straight left tackles. Brady Christensen, Blake Freeland, Kingsley Suamatia. This is a left tackle factory now, Hans. <laughs> yeah, and you fired your offensive line coach. So, you know, <laughs> In I, spite of that. I mean, yeah, so, so think about this. you got to go back, I think it's 2005 or 2004 before this. The last time there was a BYU offensive lineman drafted, think about that. And then you get Christensen, um, you get Freeland, and now you're getting Kingsley drafted. Uh, that is really impressive, uh, especially with that long gap in between. But you're going to need it. You're going to need it. You're going to need some really good offensive tackles as you progress in the Big 12 because, you know, especially with Utah and their defensive edges that are coming in, you know you're going to see some really good defensive edges at some point, you're going to see athletic defensive edges in Deion Sanders' uh, defense. You're going to get some really athletic, incredible guys. So I think the Big 12 is going to be locked with really good ends. And I, and I will tell you this, too, Jeremy. I, I've, I've noticed this with the Big 12. I think some of the best offensive tackles, some of the best college offensive tackles in the country are playing in the Big 12. If you're a defensive end playing in the Big 12, you've got big competition. And we saw that by BYU only being able to muster up 11 sacks last year. Certainly have to produce more on that side of the football. Speaking of, who else could be drafted from BYU and who is the next best prospect? Well, I don't think there will be another player drafted by BYU. Um, I was impressed by what Slovis did at the combine. You know, there were only 14 quarterbacks invited to the NFL combine and Slovis was one of them. So I was really impressed with his 40 time. I, I am sure. Where was that last and season? I know. Right, Jeremy. I mean, you could have ran some different speed options and, and zone read options and he was you got him off the edge, but yeah, he did score a couple of rushing touchdowns though. Yes, he did. In, in the, in the beginning. First, first few games, but I do think that he showed some really impressive ability. He might slip in to the sixth, maybe a very small, maybe, um, but more likely is going to be a free agent. And then the other guy I see as being a free agent and landing a camp is Isaac Rex. I, I think he's going to get a, an opportunity. I don't know if he'll land. I don't know if he'll stick. But I do think he's going to get an opportunity. What about Ryan Rico and Max Tooley? I don't care about punters. And, <laughs> um, and, and Max Tooley, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I think Max should get a camp. I'll tell you this. If I'm a defensive coordinator, if I'm a linebacker's coach in the NFL, I am definitely giving that kid a shot. Um, he plays with reckless abandon. And you have to love and respect and appreciate that. Where does he fit? Because uh, he certainly is kind of a little lighter. Um, and obviously the game has changed where it's sideline to sideline as, uh, as opposed to maybe between the tackles historically. But, um, you know, he's, he's fast, but is he fast enough for a safety? Is he not big enough for a linebacker? Where does Max Tooley fit there? Yeah, not fast enough for a safety. He would, I think he'd have to play on the outside. Maybe mm -hmm. he could put on some weight and play a little bit more inside, but... I would keep him at his current size and I'd have him on the outside because I do think that he covers from inside numbers to outside half pretty, pretty well. And I think that he's got some coverage ability too. I think he can lock on a uh, certain tight end sets. I think he can lock on them. Uh, I love, I've been the biggest fan of Max Tooley. I, I don't know if you've seen or, or uh, others out there have seen, but, I've done a lot of film work on Max Tooley over the years. Uh, I am firmly placed in the Max Tooley fan club. I, I love the way he plays it. I could actually see him landing a camp and I could see him landing a practice squad opportunity that then gives him an opportunity down the line. 
And the hope is that guys like A.J. Bonkpachan and Eddie Hecker and Camden Garrett get an opportunity, at least a mini camp, and then can go up from there. We shall see. Um, is BYU producing enough NFL draft and free agency talent right now? Or is there, an, is there a number in the draft that, on average over like a five-year span that you want to see? Because we're talking about like one, maybe two guys this year. What's the number you want to see realistically that where BYU could get? Guys, you know what's crazy, Jeremy? Uh, if you take the last three drafts and you look at the, the number in the last three drafts, it's, it's nine picks over the last three drafts. It would take you 12 previous drafts to get to nine guys. So think about that. The last three drafts, now that is including the 2021 draft with Zach Wilson. You had five guys in that 21 uh, draft. Yeah. Zach Wilson is the number two pick. In the last three years, nine draft picks. It would take 12 drafts previous to get to nine picks. So you're headed in the right direction. That, that's, that, that is a fact. But I would like to see consistently three and four and five picks every year. Um you know, you go past that 2021. If you, so, if you go past the 2021 draft where you had five picks, you had a couple of drafts where you didn't have a pick. Yep. And then you've got to go back to 2009, the last time you had more than one pick. So, yeah, it, things are changing. They need to continue to change, but things have dramatically changed, and and the talent has gotten better. And as you pointed out, just seeing offensive linemen drafted out of BYU again is a really good sign. Okay, transfer portal season for football. We're seeing people enter the portal. Not big names from BYU right now, but we're not seeing any signings either coming in quite yet. What are the positions that you feel BYU needs to target in the portal and get in here for this fall? Well, obviously they don't care what I think, and that's why I sit on a radio. That's what they told me. And that's why I sit, I sit in, a, in a booth and call a game. <laughs> but I, I would target the quarterback. I'm, I'm just not You would bring in a quarterback. quarterback. Yeah, I'm not sold that the quarterback position is, is ready at BYU. Mm. Um, I, I do love Retzloff. I, I think that he's a winner to his core. I think he's a winner. Um, I just don't know how much you can do with his skill set. And I think sometimes... His hustle and his belief in himself gets you in bad situations. So Aaron Roderick is going to have to do a heck of a coaching job with Retzloff to, to not kill that winning drive that he has, to, to be able to grow it, but also help him to rein in some of the things that he can and can't do at this level. And Gary Bohannon, I, I just, you know, he's he was out last year and I – I don't, I don't have a lot of belief that he could come in and, and be that starting quarterback that can, that can carry an offense. So I would, I would like to see BYU jump in and, and throw some money at a quarterback. I know you say throw some money, but collective or NIL or whatever you got to do and get a real contending quarterback. Because I'm telling you right now, this, the competition in the, in the big 12 with a quarterback with, Shadur Sanders and Noah Fafita and Cam Rising and Jalen Daniels and KJ Jefferson and Rocco Beck and Garrett Green at West Virginia. And you go down the list, you've got crazy quarterbacks in this league. And I don't know if Jake Retzloff is that guy. I don't know if Jerry <laughs> Bunn is that guy. And it's always okay to have more. We'll see if BYU at some point is in the we buy a quarterback game. Right now they have not been. They brought in guys yeah. they're hoping can kind of resurrect their situations well, in Gary Bohannon and Keaton Slovis prior. I wonder if BYU will get in that game and if so, when. I'll add to this, Jerem. So I'm, I'm not the biggest believer in Retzloff or Bohannon being able to, to carry it to the heights that, you know, seven or eight wins. Because that's where BYU, they know they need to get the seven or eight wins. Yeah. Okay. 
I'm not confident that those two can do that. I am confident that Aaron Roderick is one of the best quarterback coaches in the country. And that is proven out by two drafted quarterbacks, his last two, and then one that is currently sitting potentially as a sixth-round pick, more likely as a free agent, is probably going to land a camp. Now, he didn't max out like maybe we'd all hoped uh, as far as production last year, but he's a heck of a quarterback. And, and so I have incredible confidence that Aaron Roderick is one of the top quarterback coaches in the country based off of the guys he's had drafted and, and the production he's gotten out of these guys. So if you rest in that belief, then, then maybe he can get Retzloff up to snuff. Maybe he can get Bohannon up to snuff. I just don't think that those guys are – you know, what you, what you'd hope? I mean, because you want to be a Big Twelve champion, you know, you, you don't want to just get six wins, seven wins, get four wins in conference play, or get close to five hundred in conference play. Like, I want BYU to be a Big Twelve champion, Amen. and that's going to take big time QB play. Uh, yeah, I just named off Shadur Sanders and Noel Fafita. I bet both of those guys are in the Heisman conversation at the end of the season. So uh, that's where I want BYU to be. They got the quarterback coach. I just want the talent. And and again, I'm not doubting Jake Retzloff because he could go prove me wrong. He's as close to Riley Nelson as anybody I could ever find. And I love Riley Nelson. Like that dude was the real deal. And he was a competitor and a winner and gritty and way better than me at play by play, or at color and like <laughs> everything about the guy. Is, is incredible. and But there's a, another level of quarterback that I, I hope BYU can get to at some point. Hans, bring in the heat. We always appreciate the time. Best of luck with everything. You bet. Anytime, guys. Hans Olsen coming with some heat. Strong opinions on what BYU needs in the portal, specifically at the quarterback position. And it depends what you're going for. Like, if you are like, hey, we're going to make a bowl game-ish, then, yeah, I, he's probably right. But you, you want to feel like, okay, we're going to go in the eight-plus win range. Can BYU do that? Can BYU summon that from Jake Retzloff or Gary Bohannon? Uh, Hans feels like BYU would need to upgrade there to feel better about, like, winning a Big 12 title. So, hey, continue to develop. And like you said, Aaron Roderick's a great developer of quarterbacks. Let's bank on that. <laughs> Throw another quarterback into the mix, huh? You know? Well, let's find another one. Buy a hurt. quarterback. How much are they? <laughs> Millions. BYU baseball begins a three-game series uh, at Oklahoma State. Check that. Softball against Baylor tomorrow night, 8 oh, yeah. Eastern. That is uh, what we're talking about, baby, as the Bears and Cougars get set tomorrow it, night on Big 12 now. The series looms large for BYU's NCAA tournament chances. Up next, the best way to win a game against Utah. And the best player fan interactions in BYU, player referee interactions in BYU history. This is BYUSN. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Follow BYU Sports Nation on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Welcome back to Studio B. I am Spencer Linton. He is Jerem Jordan. Let's roll out your headlines. Jackson Robinson declares for the 2024 NBA Draft. He led BYU in scoring at 14.2 points per game this year and was the Big 12 sixth man of the year. He has some different options uh, for him. If he wants to come back to BYU, he could certainly do that, stay in, or he could come back by May 12th and transfer to another college. We'll see what happens. BYU Basketball Center, Atiki Ali Atiki, what can AAA do for you? Has entered the transfer portal as of yesterday, first reported by Travis Branham. Atiki averaged four points and 3.2 rebounds last season for the Cougars. Kevin Young hires Brandon Dunson as his first assistant coach. Dunson has been on the Stanford staff the last two years, as well as Nevada and Denver notably. Welcome to Brigham, to Brandon Dunson. John Rothstein of CBS Sports reporting BYU will play at Providence in the Big 12 Big East battle next season. BYU did not play in last season's Big 12 Big East battle, so this is new territory for Cougar basketball. Long road trip to Rhode Island. The Friars finished 21 and 14 last season. Baseball beats Utah 5-4 on a ninth inning. Kuhil Aloy walk-off single. Bottom of the ninth. 
Bases loaded. Aloy, slow dribbler, kick the shortstop. BYU wins. Rikers down, scores. And the freshman from Maui delivers another game winner against Utah. BYU wins it 5 to 4. Hey, E6, single, whatever. It's a nice win. The Cougars sweep the two game series the season against Utah. BYU plays at number 19 Oklahoma State, a three game series starting Thursday. 7 Eastern on Big 12 now on ESPN Plus and BYU Ring. Aloha means goodbye to the Utes. Very How good. about this? Haley Morrow of BYU Softball makes history as the first ever Big 12 Softball Player of the Week honoree for the Cougars. Morrow hit 583 last week, totaling seven hits, four home runs, 10 runs driven in, all of which led the conference. Morrow helped lead BYU to a 4-0 record in those games and the Cougars' first ever Big 12 sweep last week. Men's golf in the Big 12 tournament final day. Uh, BYU right now in seventh place, six over par, shooting two under today. They were in first place after day one. Best of luck to the boys. Let's not forget that Kevin Young, new basketball coach, still hard at work with the Phoenix Suns in the NBA playoffs. The Suns lost to the Minnesota Timberwolves in game two of the first round series last night. So Phoenix now trails two games to none in that series. Those are today's headlines. Now we whip it. The Cougar Whip Round presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. UA baseball beat Utah in walk-off fashion as we saw a moment ago last night. Is that better than a blowout win? I think so. It just, it just take it from them at the, like the very last moment, like hearts broken. So the rejoicing juxtaposed with like hearts breaking on the other side to me is what makes sports, like one of the many things that makes sports so great. We remember blowouts, but not as much as dramatic wins. Like you remember UCLA 59 nothing, well, you remember back to Harleen and Nebraska and, and uh, SMU, Hail Mary is way more, right? So dramatic wins beat blowout wins. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's stay with football, uh, Jerem. The Jets posted a tweet saying, this is just so weird. Thank you, Zach Wilson. Why would the Jets post this? <laughs> what, what, you, what should Zach's response be to this? Uh, thank you for the signing bonus. That's what, <laughs> that's what he got out of that experience. <laughs> I appreciate the money. 22 the mil or whatever it was. contributions. <laughs> uh, I, for me, it was like, I wanted to post, okay. <laughs> for nothing. Just okay. Just okay. Goodbye. Okay. It's just a Thank thumb. You. It's okay. just a thumbs up. Okay. Last night in the Suns Timberwolves game, Anthony Edwards dapped up a ref as he was trying to usher him to the inbound spot. What's your favorite BYU ref interaction? Probably the Taryn Houck hug after the Manga Miracle at Nebraska. Good it one. was recreated by our good friend Jared Jacobs, uh, Gold Yeller, in Lego stop motion as yeah. well. He went to the detail of like showing the referee being hugged by Taryn Howe. So that's probably, As he's doing the touchdown signal, so he's like in a vulnerable position. It's probably number one for me. <laughs> okay, what about you? You're Riley right. Nelson high fives the ref. I stood about 10 feet away from that. I was uh, doing uh, sideline for BYU radio. I flipped on this switch on this like Batman pack I had to try and get on the air, but it took two seconds of delay to get on. And Mark Lyons beat me to it. He's like, he just high fived the ref. I was like, gosh, dang it, Mark, you're way better than I am at this. But that was a funny moment. Another one that's pretty funny is when uh, a, a re uh, Ty Detmer had some choice words for an official about a call at BYU. <laughs> and then the ref flipped on his mic a little early to say a penalty. And someone said, what did he say to you? And he said, uh, Ty told me you're full of blank. So that's pretty fun. <laughs> I have verified said story. Ty Detmer, long live the legend. Oh, hero. <laughs> He's a hero. <laughs> Up next. Leah Katoa and Elisa Keller, BYU track yeah. and field in Studio B to preview the Robison Invitational. We're bringing the stars into the Cougar Council Room. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Welcome back to BYU Sports Station. We are live in Studio B alongside Jerem Jordan. I'm Spencer Linton. We cannot do what our next guest do. We cannot. We typically can't do the things that our guests do. <laughs> That's true. It, like anything. <laughs> but especially this. Specifically, some elite track and field athletes. Leah Katoa and Elisa Keller of BYU Women's Track and Field are with us on the show. Welcome. What's up? Thank you. Thank How you are we doing? Coordinated. You <laughs> look good. Yes. 
as always. It's a, it's a comfortable uh, hoodie, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, very comfortable. Very, very, very so nice. hot with it outside, how hot it is outside. I know, but yeah. for the TV, it looks great. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can change it. So based on the track record, no pun intended, oh, <laughs> of what BYU track and field has done on the men's and women, the women's side specifically, we shouldn't be surprised that you have a great team again. So uh, this is a question for both of you, but how would you sum up how the season has gone thus far? Leah, we'll start with you. It's gone really well. I feel like all of my teammates have worked really hard and we've got some really good marks that have got multiple of, uh, multiple of us on the top 10 board, which has been really cool. And so I'm just excited to see how we finish the season. I love seeing uh, the track and field Twitter account, just top 10, Leah Katoa, hammer or whatever. Like, <laughs> yes. I it's happening every weekend. What, yeah. is that, what is that like for you guys to kind of have that kind of success? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that really quick? What's it like to have that kind of success where someone's putting up a top 10, it feels like every meet? Honestly, it's really exciting. Like, we all work really hard for it, especially, like, javelin throwers, too. Like, we are, like, practicing nine months. Like, we don't get an indoor season. So it's definitely really exciting once we start hitting those marks. That's true. I've never thought about it. There's no javelin indoor. There isn't. Hammer and discus indoor? Just There's, like, an indoor version of hammer, which is called the weight throw. It's just super heavy. <laughs> it's just super heavy. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. Uh, how did you get into javelin, Elisa? Like, how does that begin? <laughs> and we're, Leah, we're going to explore the hammer and the ja or the discus as well as you. But how, how do you get into javelin? It's actually a funny story. So a family friend he used to throw here. He actually saw me throwing a PVC pipe in my backyard, and was just like, "Oh my gosh, you'd be good at javelin throwing." <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, he actually told me that my freshman year of high school, and I ignored him for like three years. And then I started my junior year, and then I was like, oh, wow, I can actually be good at this. Okay, why were you throwing PVC pipes? <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. I just think I was just doing it for fun. I was bored, and I was just <laughs> throwing a PVC pipe in my backyard. How bored are you? Yes. I was throwing PVC pipes. Uh, <laughs> bottle rockets were somehow involved in this, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shooting them through. That's crazy. Um, and then you were trying to vault with it. It was crazy. Um, <laughs> what, what is it about javelin that you liked? That you were like, okay, I'll try this. And then now it's like, oh, I really like I it. Just, I just love the challenge it gives me. There's always room for improvement. And also with all the new injury experiences, there's, it never gets boring. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> there's just always new injuries that you're going to experience with javelins. Either your back, your arm, your, your shoulder, shoulder your, oh everything. <laughs> javelin wow. is wild, right? It is. And it's a good Book of Mormon reference, too, with Javelin. It is. Okay. That's what I like to use. Right? Yeah. Right? Tian comes, shout out. Okay, <laughs> hammer and discus. What yes. was it about that that you loved? Um, well, I started discus in high school, and I, I just fell in love with discus. But uh, hammer is one of those things you don't learn until college. It's kind of one of those things they make everyone try unless you're a Javelin thrower. <laughs> and so, nice. yeah, hammer I just automatically like clicked with, and I just loved it. And so I've just been doing it since freshman year. And then... Yeah, I just fell in love with both disc and hammer. It's been a lot of fun. Lee, I think you have a real case that you're the greatest Katoa to ever be an athlete at BYU. Oh, <laughs> oh you're going to take off. I'm just saying. I'm just, I love Peeny. Come on. I hope my cousin would like that. First cousin, right? <laughs> Katoa, you got uh, David, your uh, brother, is committed to sign a, 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 he signed at Utah. Yes, for that's right. He's a good player. So. Yeah. And, and both your parents were athletes here? Yes, that's right. right. Uh, yeah. Your sister played volleyball here, I think, too? Yes, she Who's did. the best athlete in the fam? <sighs> Or cousins. Oh, well, <laughs> honestly, my little brother Dave, he's, he's a stud. I think they saved it for the youngest. He's probably the best out of us all. <laughs> nice. All right, pushing forward, Robinson okay. Invitational mm -hmm. around the corner. Well, what are your goals at this point for that meet and beyond? Um, Elisa, we'll start with you. Honestly, the goal is always to like PR, but honestly, just like it's my first home meet, it's my second coll collegiate meet, just to have fun, just to experience it all. It's good to experience the journey. Okay, Leah, what about you? Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, this is my first home meet at BYU as well. And I'm just excited for the rest of the season to try and like get a little higher on the top 10 board. <laughs> just push out my throws. I every need to meet. see that graphic. What was that? This week, I need to see that on Twitter. Oh, oh yes, I want to yes. see another one. Yeah, <laughs> which would be cool. What is it about um, a home meet that's going to be especially cool for you guys this weekend? We'll start with you, Leah. Yeah, no, it's so cool because we practice hours and hours a week at this beautiful track that we have. And so it's really cool to be able to have all these cool schools that we always compete with and have everyone in one space, like in our space, and we get to host everybody. And it's like where we're comfortable, but also where I think we're ready to kind of like let loose and hopefully throw as far as we can. And also just since like it's always just like the school I've kind of always just wanted to be, go to. And since we've had meets like every other state except here, it's just really nice to... Have a meet here. Finally have yeah, to finally meet. have a meet here. That's cool. 
Okay, so you referenced, uh, Leah, you specifically some BYU and Utah ties there. These, these homes, these families divided. So how do you navigate that being a BYU athlete? <laughs> um, it's honestly funny. So five out of seven of my siblings have been college athletes. And so in my home, my parents always have loved BYU because that's where they they went to school so of course they loved it but it was honestly whatever child was at what school is that's what we were fans of and then my parents if they could they would have half utah half byu so that's kind of how we <laughs> whatever what, whoever's playing that day that's who they're <laughs> rooting for oh, emotionally that is so <laughs> <laughs> no, at least so you dope. come from a traditionally byu centric home or did you step out of a different fan base if my you know. dad went to byu but that's really all i'm the first collegiate athlete in my family what's that so. been like for you to kind of pave the way there it's a little nerve-wracking because I'm the first one, but it's also really exciting just to be an example to my siblings and be like, oh, BYU is a really good school, especially for sports. That's it all right. began yes, it with a simple PVC pipe, PVC pipe in the backyard. In the backyard. <laughs> and now look at you making top 10 lists. We can, all, Literally. we can all visualize that so perfectly, by the way. For me, it was like trying to, um, you know, like high jump onto the trampoline as a kid. That was like exciting and fun. Okay, school. Uh, finals are almost over. Where are we with finals right now? I'm done. I'm excited to be done. Congratulations. <laughs> I just have two more tests so I'm going to go take today. Okay. <laughs> today. Let's okay. go. Yep. Which yeah. ones? I have stats and then media law. Media law sounds hard. So does stats. Okay. Good yeah. luck. <laughs> in that yes. Thank you. Some I'll BYU Sports Nation karma for that to you. Good luck. We send <laughs> you yes, the best Thank of you. luck. I'll okay. Need it. What's better? At least since you've done it, walking out of the last final in a semester or seeing your name on a top 10 list? Good question. Oh, seeing my name on the top 10 list. Okay. Yeah. There's no wrong really? answer there because there are a few feelings like walking out of the last final and being like, yeah. I'm, or, done. Like I'm, I'm done. done for a little bit. <laughs> or is it walking down those stairs in the brim hall and seeing oh. your name on the top 10 list of who just scored well oh. academically? I wouldn't I like know what that. that feels like, but maybe you guys do. No, I don't think they have our names up know. on there yet. Oh, we're too yeah, old. I don't That's think they, it used to be. Never mind. I don't think bad. they do that till after the season. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. It used to be that you walked down the stairs and you saw your. Oh, score. you're talking about the testing center. I'm talking about and like. Oh, I said Brimhall. Sorry, the testing center. <laughs> okay, seeing your seeing your scores immediately. Yes, because I would come down and then a flush of emotion. Jeremy's got PTSD. For this. <laughs> yeah, no, I hate that place. It's the worst. Yeah. So, in all seriousness, best of luck to you and the Thank Robinson you. Invitational Thank you. to your final uh, two tests. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's great to have you in studio. Thank, Thank you. For being with Thank us. you for having us. Nice us. to meet you. <laughs> okay, baseball three game series at Oklahoma State. Hey, go beat the Cowboys. Right, starts tomorrow night. 7 Eastern on Big 12 Now on ESPN Plus and BYU Radio. We are one week into the Kevin Young era of BYU basketball and their new head coach. How would you assess the state of the Cougars program? More of your responses on the way. This is BYUSN. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Our question of the day, one week into the Kevin Young era, how would you assess the state of BYU's basketball program? BYU for Trey on X answers. This might be the best spot BYU has ever been in. Whoa. There's been some amazing coaches in the past. Stan Watts, Dave Rose, Mark Pope were great. But none of those guys had the kind of financial support we're currently seeing at BYU. The next era could be the best ever. And it's an era where you pay players. So uh, you need money. So let's go. I like that. Uh, Brad Tufts on uh, Twitter. Same as always, let's go. It's a huge Kool-Aid man <laughs> with the BYU logo. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, it's, yeah, it's we're, all drinking the, we're all drinking the Kool-Aid. Let's Indeed. go. Indeed. Uh, our elite voice of the day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated comes in from Texas Vandy 14 on X, who says, like a new relationship <laughs> with a hot date. Good sign, solid flirting up front, but too early to tell. Need another week or so to see where this goes. Only a, a week? week? You need one that more week? That is the week? most BYU tweet of all time. <laughs> Do you run with a backpack on? Do you wear sandals with socks? One more week? Oh, my goodness. That's funny. I'm going to need a little longer than a week. How to about a fully, year? To fully embrace and, like, comprehend what this thing is. A week? <laughs> Good stuff. Wow. Blue Kool-Aid for all. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. There's a lot to hand out, but let's start with baseball beating Utah Spence yeah. in walk-off yes. fashion. That was good. Cougs struggled at home, got a dramatic win over the rivals. Now they go to Oklahoma State. Got to, they got to put together a nice end of the season and then hopefully be top 10, make the Big 12 tournament. Shout out to Jackson Robinson, uh, NBA draft. He has worked really hard the last two years to go from, I barely played at all at Texas A&M and Arkansas 
to the Big 12 Sixth Man of the Year, I mean, and a amazing. guy that's in the mix for the draft, a place that BYU has not been in very much. Best of luck to Atiki Ali, Atiki, whatever happens there. Brandon Dunson coming in as assistant, assistant coach. coach. There's a lot going on right now. April, late April typically is kind of slow. It ain't slow right now, bro. I don't think it's going to be slow for a very long time. No. With uh, where we are in collegiate sports. And we haven't had any, like, this guy's coming to BYU football news either in the portal. Let's go. All right, our thanks to today's guests, Hans Olsen, Leah Katoa, and Elisa Keller. Sorry to Dennis. We ran into time. For Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. Our annual shout-out to Ben Saylor in the spirit of BYU baseball. Oh, Ben Saylor was awesome, bro. PVC pipe throwing for everyone. <laughs> go Cougs. <laughs>